Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Batman video. We just got this giant news release this morning, so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with this new alternate version of Batman inside the new movies. So just going down the list, starting with number five, if you didn't see the news this morning, Michael Keaton himself is officially in talks to come back as Batman. Two words that I want you all to remember, they're very important, and if I leave you with anything, I'm gonna leave you with these two words. And those two words are, I'm Batman. They also say that the deal that he's signing is a Nick Fury type of deal where he would appear in multiple upcoming DC projects as his version of Batman. I just did a video about the news of Flashpoint Batman that was released this past weekend, so the trades this morning are also reporting that Michael Keaton himself is going to be coming back as an older version of his Batman from the 1989 movie in Batman Returns. The first movie he's in talks for now is a multiverse version of the Flash movie, which makes a little more sense how you include his version of Batman and have it all make sense. Because right now we have the Ben Affleck Batman, we have the Robert Pattinson Batman, which is sort of a reboot of the franchise set in a slightly different universe. There was all the talk about Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Flashpoint Batman this past weekend but he would be playing his version of Batman in the Flash movie. There's no talk about how many scenes he would have or how big his role in the story would be, only that this would be part of a multiverse story that they would tell during the Flash movie. The Flash is a very multiverse-based character, so it's pretty easy to justify him traveling between Earths in the multiverse. There's even video of an interview that Ezra Miller did a while ago where he talks about doing multiverse story inside the Flash movie. We're really, we're starting about we're talking about sparking a whole new universe, which is, it's not just the DC ex multiverse, it's also, it's the speedster multiverse. And the speedsters are the ones who connect all of the disparate pieces. He sounds a little bit crazy when he's talking about it there, but you get the idea. It sounds like they're traveling to multiple different Earths inside the multiverse during the Flash movie. And one of those Earths will just happen to be Michael Keaton's Earth from the Batman movies. Most of you also probably remember from Crisis on Infinite Earths, his Batman actually had a cameo scene right at the beginning. He was literally one of the first Earths that they traveled to in this big montage at the beginning of that event. Because now the entire multiverse is about to come under attack. There is a malevolent force at work, one driven by a singular goal. Well, I hope you're watching, big guy. He was on Earth 1989 just because that was the year that his first Batman movie came out. That's Robert Wool, who played Alexander Knox in that scene from the Batman movies, reading a newspaper that he worked at during those movies, detailing Batman just catching the Joker. So it's hard to say when that scene was actually happening in that timeline because the original 1989 Batman movie ended with the Joker dying in their final fight. So make of that what you will. Maybe this scene is just meant to take place right after that happened, before the events of Batman Returns. Doing a multiverse type of story inside the Flash movie is also an easy way for them to do the movie if they're not able to get Ben Affleck's Batman to come back to do a cameo scene to tie everything together. You also have Robert Pattinson's Batman movie in this other universe. You have the Joker movie, which is also in its own separate universe. So the multiverse is just the easiest way to deal with all these problems. What about those other upcoming DC projects that he would be involved in? They don't specify live action or animated, so some of them could be upcoming live action movies, some of them could be upcoming animated movies as well, with him just doing voiceover. There's the long gestating live action Batman Beyond movie that Warner Brothers almost made after they were going to reboot the Batman franchise post Joel Schumacher Batman with George Clooney. They didn't stop at one. Seven against two, pretty bad odds for them. Most of you remember the animated Batman Beyond series that started during 1999. There was actually an Easter egg for that during Crisis on Infinite Earths with Kevin Conroy's version of Batman. He was on Earth 1999 because that was the year that Batman Beyond came out, but he was also meant to be a version of Kingdom Come Batman with a darker backstory in the exoskeleton that he was wearing. Oh, I never thought I'd get a chance to do it on camera because I was getting older and older and older. I was sort of aging out of Batman, you know, but luckily I aged into old Bruce Wayne. <laughs> If you don't remember, way back in the day, the live-action Batman Beyond movie actually goes back to August 2000, 
Warner Brothers announced it was developing the live-action Batman Beyond movie to refresh the franchise. Now, this was way before they were talking to Christopher Nolan about doing his Dark Knight trilogy. They brought on the TV series creators Paul Dini and Alan Burnett. They were writing a screenplay for a feature film. Neil Stevenson was hired as a consultant. They turned in their first draft of the script in 2001, but then by August 2001, the studio put those plans on hold and then started planning what would eventually become Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. They explained that that version of live-action Batman Beyond would have been super dark, nihilistic, lots of swearing and violence, and it wasn't going to be the PG-13 type of Batman that Warner Brothers is known for putting out. The only rated R Batman film that you're going to find is actually the animated film based on The Killing Joke. But we have Robert Pattinson's Batman movie coming up with Matt Reeves next year. We all talk about how do you redo the Batman franchise, refresh everything without making it feel exactly like the same thing that came before. I've already done a lot of videos about that movie, but one of the other fresh ways to handle the Batman character that they've never done before in the movies or the live action TV shows is Batman Beyond, probably the easiest slam dunk movie that they could do. And if they feel like they don't want to make a full blown live action Batman Beyond movie, it would be the perfect HBO Max series. Seriously, Batman Beyond HBO Max series do six to eight episodes, do like four to five seasons. If AT&T is trying to get people to subscribe to HBO Max and pay for that service, that would be one of the easiest ways to do it. A live action Batman Beyond series with Michael Keaton's Batman. Deadline is also reporting that they would use Michael Keaton's Batman in the upcoming Batgirl movie, which is apparently still in development. Joss Whedon was the one that started that project, but then he left saying that he just couldn't come up with a convincing idea for it. They didn't say when the Batgirl movie would take place. They haven't cast an actress for that yet. They didn't say if it'd be tied to any of the Justice League or DCEU films that they're doing right now. Batgirl isn't really a multiverse type of character. All of her stories are pretty straight up just like regular Batman movies. So I don't see them using a lot of multiverse twists in that movie, whatever it winds up being. So for now, I would just assume that whichever Batgirl that they do, if he's going to be in it, she would just be the Batgirl from his Earth. The only Batgirl that we've seen so far was during the Schumacher films, and technically that's not the same Batman from the Michael Keaton films. You kind of have to treat it like it's off in its own universe just because things change so much, even though it's the same version of Alfred. So you could argue that it's meant to be the same Batman just played by a different actor, but I think it's best to just consider that that's happening on a different Earth in the multiverse just because there are too many inconsistencies in other places between all those different films. And here's another big one too, other high profile upcoming DC projects. We keep wondering how they're going to handle Robert Pattinson Batman if they did a future Justice League movie. But could you imagine them using an older Michael Keaton Batman in the next Justice League movie instead of Robert Pattinson using a multiverse twist? Warner Brothers hasn't really said anything about what they plan on doing with the next Justice League in terms of Robert Pattinson. Matt Reeves has implied that his Batman trilogy is meant to be off in its own little thing. So there were a lot of journalists this morning referring to the Michael Keaton Batman that's supposed to be coming back now into the DC movies as being the Justice League Batman and Robert Pattinson's Batman just kind of being off in its own separate thing and he would not be the one to cross over in future Justice League movies. But without Warner Brothers officially releasing plans for what that next Justice League is, I think most of that's just speculation. Let me know in the comments though, would you rather see older Batman Michael Keaton show up in the next Justice League movie and just be that Justice League Batman? Or would you rather see Robert Pattinson's Batman from the Batman franchise come into the new Justice League film? For the most part, when people talk about Michael Keaton coming back as the character though, they're talking about live action Batman Beyond just because he's aged into that older Batman, so it would just be a lot easier for them to justify having him on screen looking like he does with a version of Terry McGinnis being introduced. And it's easier to do that movie when you have other Batman movies in present day like Robert Pattinson's Batman movie that it's so far in the future that you don't really have to worry about continuity issues. And even though it's funny to include clips of the Grant Gustin, Ezra Miller cameo scene during Crisis on Infinite Earths, just in terms of other multiverse stuff, if we're talking about a big multiverse Flash story in the Flash movie, it's totally possible that they could find their way to have a Grant Gustin cameo during that. Right now, that movie is set to start filming sometime early next year, but when we get more information about that, of course, I'll do a video. And if you weren't excited about the Flash movie before, the idea of Michael Keaton Batman showing up in that and then also showing up in other future DC movies just feels so cool. I mean, we were talking about Flashpoint Batman this past weekend, and he's a cool version of Batman, but getting Michael Keaton to come back as Batman, something that he said he would probably never do, just feels like the most amazing thing ever. 
So everyone, post all your theories in the comments. What other upcoming DC movies do you want them to use older Michael Keaton Batman in? I know you're all probably going to say live action Batman Beyond, but let me know if there are any others too. While you wait for everything, click here for my Justice League Snyder Cut trailer video and click here for that video from Crisis on Infinite Earths of his cameo scene and all those Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.